Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake with Redefined Horizons. This is a Field Survey Friday video. In this video, we are going to give you an overview of differential leveling. So I've got a little diagram here that we'll, that we'll work our way through. <clears throat> kind of a crude, I don't know if it, if it deserves the term diagram. We could call it a sketch. <laughs> okay, so what is a differential level? I wanted to show you guys one. I don't have any here at the office today. They're both out with my crews, but uh, a differential level is an instrument. We'll, uh, and we'll do a separate video that shows you a, a, a Philly rod and a level. But a differential level is an instrument that um, basically, when you set it up and level it, it creates a level plane. Okay, So when you, when you look through the instrument at the crosshair, so when you look through and you see this crosshair, Okay, this horizontal crosshair basically forms a level plane. So as you pivot the head of the instrument, and you swing that crosshair around, everything you see at that crosshair is at the same elevation. Okay, that's what a differential level is. Okay, now most of the levels that we have today, differential levels, are also called automatic levels. Okay, why are they called automatic levels? Okay, so inside of the level, and this is a crude simplification, but inside of the level, so if this is the scope, okay, is a little uh, prism that hangs. Okay, which is, is what, or glass, prism or glass, okay, and it actually is suspended from the top of the level. And it swings, so it's got room to swing here. And what that does is, if you get the, if you get the level close to being level, inside the, the glass will swing to a, give you a good 90 degree plumb, 90 degree plumb line, right? And it just makes it easier to get a good level plane. Okay, because that, that pendulum, um, even if this level is slightly imperf imp imperfectly leveled, the swinging prism motion will, will give you the 90 degree level plane, that the nice crisp 90 degree angle here. Okay, it'll give you a good level plane. So it's called an automatic level. I don't know that I've ever used a level that wasn't an automatic level, but at some point in time, there was such a thing. Okay, so differential level. Shoots a level plane. Why is it called differential? Because we're using it to measure elevation differences. That's where the, the term differential comes from. We're measuring elevation differences. Okay, and an automatic level has that little free swinging glass in it that, that eliminates some of the imperfections that come when you have your level leveled. Okay, so I'm gonna talk briefly about a digital level. Okay, because now well, it's not something we use here at RH. We just we don't do enough leveling for that, but I know a lot of companies use them. So in traditional leveling, differential leveling, you read what's called a Philly rod. So this is called a Philly rod. Okay, Philly. I don't know why it's called a Philly rod. If you know, maybe you could let me know in the comments there. It's called a Philly rod. Okay, this is your level. And a, and a Philly rod, we'll do another video where I teach you to, to how to read a Philly rod, but a Philly rod just has some marks on it, okay? They're usually one hundredth of a foot thick, okay? Some, some special marks, and you actually sight the level rod, and you, you use the marks, and then there's numbers and marks. You use the numbers and the marks to figure out how far above the point on the ground your level plane is. So you're, you're figuring out this distance here. Okay. And I'll do a video that teaches you how to read the, the marks on a Philly rod. I need to do that. Okay, so in a digital level, the Philly rod doesn't have numbers and marks. It actually has what looks like a barcode like you would see at the grocery store. So it has lines of different thicknesses. Okay, and they form a unique pattern. And what that does is when you when you in a regular automatic level, you, a human being, looks through the scope and reads in the numbers. In a digital level, the, you don't look through the scope. I mean, you get you get the <laughs> you get the level pointed at the rod, and then there's a button you push, and it sends out a laser, and it reads this barcode, and it automatically figures out where the level plane on the level is at on the rod. Okay, that's what a digital level does. I'm old school, so I just like being able to read the Philly rod and see my actual numbers, but a lot of younger guys like these digital levels. That's how you know I'm getting old. All right. So how do you transfer an elevation with a level? It's what we call transfer, okay? So we have two points here on the ground, okay? 
We're going to call them point 10 and point 11. We'll say they're control points. Okay, let's say they're rebars and caps. Okay, and we know the elevation at point 10 is 100 feet even. And we want to get a good leveled elevation over to point number 11. Okay. So let me explain how that works. Okay, so we set up the level. You don't have to set it up over a control point because we're not worried about horizontal. We're, we're only worried about vertical or elevation. So you just set your level up somewhere between 10 and 11. Okay, and you'll level it. Get it nice and level. Now, as a general rule, you want this distance and this distance to be roughly equal. We'll, we'll talk about why that is probably in another video. But So you want this roughly in between your two points. Okay, This is going to be your back sight reading, what we call the back sight reading and foresight reading, kind of like in a total station, same concept. Okay, So once we get our level set up and leveled, okay, we read our back sight. So let's just say we look at the back sight and the number we see is 422. Okay. What that means is the level is set up, this level plane is set up 4.22 feet above the top of the control point. Okay. What that allows us to do now is calculate what is the height of or the elevation of the level plane. We call it the HI, height of instrument. Okay. And to do that, we add the backsight to the foresight. I'm sorry, we add the backsight to the control point elevation, okay? So we have 100 is a control point elevation. We're gonna add our back sight, 422. Okay, that gives us the height of the level plane or the height of instrument, okay, the elevation of the instrument. So it's 104.22. Okay. So now we have the elevation everywhere that crosshair, horizontal crosshair on the level C's, Everything you can see right at the crosshair is elevation 104.22. That's the height of instrument or the elevation of the level plane. Okay, now we turn the level and we look at the foresight. We take the filly right over and we stick it on the foresight point, okay, which is control point number 11. Remember, we don't know the elevation here. And we take another rod reading. By the way, this is called a rod reading. This is the backside rod reading. So we take a foresight rod reading and we find out that this is 436. That's the numbers that we see, 436. Okay, what that means is control point 11 is 4.36 feet below the level plane, okay, or the height of instrument. So to calculate that elevation now, it's just simple subtraction. So we take 104.22 minus 436 is gonna give us the elevation at 11. Okay, so if we do that math, we end up with, it's actually lower, right? Because I decided to make life hard on myself. So it's 14 hundredths lower, so it's 99.86. Control point 11 is 99.86. So that's why we call it transfer the elevation. We took the elevation here at 10, and we transferred an elevation over to 11, okay? Transfer is kind of a bad word. It's really calculated, but you'll hear surveyors say transfer, transfer the elevation. Okay, so just to review, take a back sight on your back sight point, calculate your height of instrument or the elevation of the level plane, turn to your foresight, take the rod reading on the foresight point, subtract that from the elevation of the level plane or the HI to get your new elevation. So back sight reading, add the back sight reading to the elevation, turn, Foresight rod reading, subtract the foresight rod reading from the HI elevation of the level plane to get your new elevation, okay? So back sights are added, foresights are subtracted. You'll see this when we do the video on level notes, differential leveling notes. Okay, now we wanna talk about turn points. So what happens when it's too far to see between 10 and 11? So I, I generally try and keep the spacing between my uh, points when I'm running a level run or a level loop to about 300 feet. So what happens if 10 and 11 are farther than 300 feet apart? So what if 10 is here and 11's down here 
and it's 600 feet. You tell your boss you can't level between them. No, that's not what you do. Okay. Okay, so what we do in that case is we set a point in between. Okay. We set a point in between. It's just a temporary point. We call it a turn point. And now, instead of doing this one time, we do it twice. So we set up our instrument here in between, take the back sight reading, calculate the HI. Turn, take the foresight reading, calculate the elevation here. Okay, that's one setup. Okay, and then we move the level, take a backside reading here. Now we have an elevation on the turn point. Calculate the HI, turn, sight the finishing control point, take a foresight reading, calculate the elevation here. So the turn point is a bridge. Okay, so elevation here, add the back sight, calculate the HI, subtract the foresight, calculate the elevation at the turn point, add the back sight, calculate the new HI, subtract the foresight, calculate the elevation at point 11. That is what a turn point is for. Okay, now, if you have a long line of setups, so if you have something like this, let me erase this. Okay, so if you have a control point here and a control point here, and you got some turns in between, okay, TP1, TP2, TP3, okay, so a little something like this. So this is an open figure, it's not closed. We call this a level run, a level run. Okay, at my shop, you are not allowed to do this unless there's very special circumstances, okay? So at my shop, what you have to do is you always have to make a closed figure, okay? So you could do that this way. So you can do TP4, TP5, TP6, Okay, so you could do this, you could do a loop and come back to your beginning point or, or you can just go back the way you came. Okay, either way you're closing out, you're coming back to where you started. That's called a level loop. Level loops are good. Okay, that's what we do most of the time, level loops. That allows us to calculate our closure, right? Because when you get back, you're usually not going to have exactly the same number that you started with. Okay, that's your closure error, the difference between those two numbers. Okay, I'm going to do another video with some tips on how to run level loops. Okay, we'll talk about where do you set a turn point, what kind of turn point do you set, that kind of thing. Okay, now let's talk about what an intermediate foresight is. Okay, an intermediate foresight, I'll give you an example. So you've got... Your point number 10, let's say, control point number 10, and here's control point number 11, okay, and this is your turn point one, okay, but in between TP1 and TP11, you want to come over here and you want to shoot control point number 12, let's say, okay. So you come here, you set up your level, take your back sight reading. Transfer your elevation over to TP1. Okay, then you set up here. Okay, do your backside reading. Come over here, do your foresight reading. Now you've got an elevation on 11. Now you just turn over and shoot 12. That's called an intermediate foresight. Okay. It's intermediate because let's say we're going to go down the road here and we're going to shoot number 13. So your next, the next place you move your instrument is over here. Okay, and you backside 11, carry your elevation to 13. Because we never backside 12, it becomes what we call an intermediate foresight. You're gonna see why that's important when we talk about the level notes, okay? But an intermediate foresight is a, is a point that you take 
a foresight reading on to calculate an elevation, but you never backside it, okay? So it's not a turn point. That's what an intermediate foresight is. You'll see some more about that when we do our notes, okay? All right, talked about run versus loop, closure error. Okay, so I'm just real quick, gonna give you a quick idea of what your closure error is, okay? So if we start at 11 with an elevation of, we'll come back, TP1, we come down here to number 12. Okay, so we set up here, backside, go to our turn point, set up again, backside our turn point, go to number 12, okay? And this is elevation 100, okay? We get down to 12, let's say we have an existing elevation of 102, okay? But when we calculate our elevation, so we're checking into this point here, we're gonna get 10203. We're gonna be off a couple hundreds almost always. Okay. That difference between these the calculated elevation and the published elevation, okay, that difference is our closure error. And we want to adjust that. We're gonna talk about that in the next video. That's our closure error. Okay. Or if you run a loop, you come all the way back and you close out on where you started, that's a loop. Okay. Again, you're going to get a number that's somewhat different. Maybe you get 99, 96. Okay. So then we've got a four hundredths closure error because we didn't come back to exactly where we started. Okay. The amount of error you're going to get is going to depend on the method you use, right? The conditions, how hard the wind's blowing, if you get heat shimmers, right? How well your your level is calibrated and the distance that you level. All those things come into play. Okay, so you want to calculate your closure error. So we'll do another video that talks about how, what do you do with your closure error in a level loop? How can you adjust it? But I wanted to run you guys through just kind of the basics of differential leveling. It's just addition and subtraction, right? Reading the rods, doing addition and subtraction. We'll actually do another video too where we go through some level notes, right? We'll, we'll do a short, short level loop and we'll show you how the notes will look, okay? All right, guys, appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed this Field Survey Friday video. We'll catch you on the next video.